On Trinity Sunday, we celebrate God as Father, Son and Holy Spirit. But what does the Trinity mean? You won't find the word Trinity in the Bible, and Jesus didn't use the word. But as Christians, we believe in one God who exists in three persons, as Father, Son and Holy Spirit, each being fully God. This is at the heart of what it means to be a Christian, and yet it is not particularly easy to understand. Different symbols are often used to try and help us. It's said that St. Patrick used the shamrock, a single plant with three leaves. Triangles, tripods and tricycles all have their place in Trinitarian symbolism. But whatever symbols we might use, none is entirely adequate to visualise the mystery of the Trinity. The belief that God's nature is threefold was experienced by the early disciples long before the Trinity was ever defined or labelled. Those very first followers of Jesus were Jews, and as Jews, of course, they had been taught that the Lord your God is one God. And yet the resurrection of Jesus seemed to convince his followers that Jesus was divine. You remember how Thomas, the doubting one, on seeing the risen Jesus' wounds, put his belief into simple words without attempting to work out the theology of it, when he confessed Jesus as my Lord and my God. And those same followers had experienced the power of the Holy Spirit, which had come upon them in fullness at Pentecost. So as a result of all of this, they couldn't deny their fundamental belief in one God but neither could they deny the divinity of Jesus or their experience of the power of God's Spirit in their lives. And so it is in the Trinity that we see how God has shown himself to us in three ways. As God the Father, that is the creative force that made the universe. As God the Son, that is Jesus who came to live among us on earth. And as God the Holy Spirit, who makes God alive in us. In this way, we can helpfully see the Trinity as a way of describing what we know about God. But I think it's really important that we remember that the Trinity was an experience before it became a doctrine. What really matters is not our intellectual grasp of it, but that we should experience God personally in our lives. And we can experience God the Father, the Creator, in the beauty and awesomeness of the created world around us. For some though, the idea of a mighty Creator God can also mean a remote, faraway God. This is a photo of sunrise on my favourite piece of English coastline down in South Devon. It reminds me of the greatness and majesty of God the Creator. And yet at the same time, I'm mindful of the words from Psalm 139. Where can I go from your spirit, writes the psalmist, or where can I flee from your presence? If I take the wings of the morning, and settle on the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me fast. The thrilling truth is that you don't have to go looking for God, because he is searching for you. From the beginning of creation, God has longed to engage with us, and he did this supremely in another way, in the incarnation, in Jesus. The words in St John's Gospel say it all. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. This great creator God made himself small, small enough to be seen in an entirely new way. God himself wore our humanity as a baby born into a humble family, as a wandering preacher with just a handful of followers at first, 
as a young man denied justice and condemned to die on a wooden cross. But as Christians, we can say, this is God. This is our one God. And Jesus himself promised his followers that he would never leave them. In his great commission to them to go and make disciples of all nations, baptising in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Jesus promised that he would be with them always to the very end of the age. And he says that to us today. The gift of the Holy Spirit, an energising, inspiring, comforting power in the lives of those first followers, left them in no doubt that Jesus' presence remained with them. And that same Holy Spirit is available to us today. The wind of God living and breathing in us and through us. And so we see that when we do take hold of God as the Trinity, these three persons of one God perfectly united, new experiences of God become possible for us. And we really shouldn't worry if we don't understand the theory of all this. Someone once said that it is no more possible for us to understand God than to put the ocean into a bucket. There is no doubt that the Trinity is a profound mystery and no human being can fully understand God. But the Christian journey is a journey of faith rather than facts. And what really matters is that we know God and experience God rather than fully understand him. So as we continue on this journey, this journey of faith, may we grow to know and love God in all his Trinitarian fullness as the creator and father who showed his love for us by sending us Jesus our redeeming Saviour, who lives in us today by his Holy Spirit. Amen.